Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay Ner Chuck, and this is The Thunder Show, aka WLTV, the 17th least popular show about wine on the internet. And today we're talking about California. Oh, no, 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 no. We have an Australian. We're talking about Chardonnay. I'm in a weird mood. It's like raining like crazy, and I really felt like I wanted to do a Chardonnay. Plus, about five or six of you have emailed me about Petaluma. By the way, I know a lot of you ask for wines to be on the show. When I hit that five or six number, that's when I feel the pressure. So, if you want it on the show, email, call, smoke signals. I don't care what you do. Get your friends, pound me. That's how I do it. Please don't pound me. I got too many emails. Anyway, I'm excited about doing the show. I've got Acacia, Sonoma Cotrere, two extremely popular, widely available. I'm trying to continue in the theme of making things that are out there so people can taste. Uh, before I start today's show, Mott, uh, begged and pleaded, but with no reason, he didn't have to. He had to just tell me we have to give a huge shout out to the uh, officers and crew of the uh, Teddy Roosevelt, right? USS Teddy Roosevelt. USS Teddy Roosevelt. And so we want to appreciate you guys watching the show. It's a big deal. If you are part of, we've done a little couple of, you know, you know, offices and things like that, please email me. If you've got more than six people in the same place watching the show, let us know. I'd love to give shout outs. It's kind of fun, everybody gets party time in the office, it's kind of cool. The one office we did the other day, they said they opened a bottle of wine after it did and everybody like got drunk in midday and the boss got mad, but then now he's a maniac. And so it's awesome. So, um, what else do I want to talk about? Back, as you can tell, I'm not wearing the same shirt anymore. I hope you enjoyed all those shows. I thought it was a pretty solid week. I know, once again, not on the couch for Laid Back Friday. I've been in a lack of a laid back kind of mood, clearly. Um, and so I apologize for that. Uh, what else did I want to cover today before we get into the wines? Not too much, I'm sure I'll think of it. Um, lots of Joe Torre talk here in New York. He's overrated. Acacia, 2005 Carneros Chardonnay. This wine is 16 US dollars. And you know when we talk about $16 wines, we've gotta talk about the biggest trader in football history, Vinny Testaverde. I'm not happy you threw a touchdown at 140 years old or whatever you are now. You said you were a Jet, true and true, and you went up and played for the Patriots. You're a disgrace. I'm down on you, Vinny. I'm down on you. I'm not happy for you in Carolina. I wish we were playing you guys. You'd probably beat us though, we're struggling this year. But this wine's $16, and this is an extremely interesting Chardonnay, I'm gonna tell you why. Little fun fact, early GV quiz time, Acacia is like the third or fourth wine I ever had. Uh, at the time, you know, uh, back, geez, 10 vintages ago, uh, I think it might have been the 94, um, Acacia was on fire, and what I like about it, it was $12 then. So as you can see, over a whole decade, it's gone up, I mean, but obviously not too bad, 30, 40%, not too horrible. It's still $16 wine. We sell boatloads of this wine. It's extremely popular. Um, it shows up on the little bit higher class lists throughout the uh, world, like the TGIF Friday VIP will have, you know, the Acacia. So it's a widely known Chardonnay. Um, you know, it's in Sonoma, Carneros. They, they make great, great wines. Traditionally, I have not had an Acacia Chard in a long time, so I'm kind of thrilled to have this along with you guys. You can see the classic golden color. Let's see what's going on. You know, I always fear <sighs> the oak monster when you do Chardonnays, so it will be very interesting to see where these current vintages are when they talk about the oak levels in this. Let's give this a little bit of a sniffy sniff. Ah, I forgot, I wanted to use the big ass glass today. Darn it. Nah. Isn't a big ass glass fun? This has some really pretty pear uh, flavors on the nose, which uh, I'm finding quite interesting. There's also a little hint of, uh, there's butter. There's a good old fashioned buttered popcorn component to this nose. There's also some dandelions dancing on the nose, which I appreciate and thank them for. Um, kind of candy-esque. I'm slightly already getting a headache by the cinnamon toast and the, the butter is just over the top. We need to come up with like the Butter Bandit or something. Just create a whole world of characters. Then we can open Wine World, it would be awesome. It's a small world. You know, it could be awesome, so let's give this a whirl. You saw them complaining about seeing this bit? We're hiding it in. You know what? This is off to a good start. This is actually pretty okay. Um, I'm really impressed with the fig 
flavor that I'm getting on this wine, which I'm enjoying quite a bit. And here's where it gets good. It's buttery, it's oaky, it's all that California, you know, all those stereotypes that make us go on California Chardonnay. At first we're like this, and then we quickly go there because it's just too much and people are over it. But it's kind of funny, I almost think that the oak butter movement is coming back now, because it, you know, it's, just, it's just amazing watching the trends. But this has acidity, and it has a crispness on the finish, and it finishes decent. Now, I don't want you to get too crazy with my reaction, I just think it's a lot better than I thought it could have been. Um, I see this as a very good foundation Chardonnay. I think people that are looking to get outside of the Two Buck Chucks and the Kendall Jacksons, the Simmies and the BV Coastals and the Bogles and things. This is the nice next step if you're still down with the Butter Bandit. I like that, we might need a t-shirt. Um, then this is a wine that you're going to enjoy. The buttered popcorn element in this wine is just almost impossible to not see. Even for a beginner I think this is gonna be one of those wines that you can use to help you find flavors because this is super in that zone. Um, slight pears, good acidity. I'm really impressed because as I'm talking, yapping to you right now, the acidity is still sitting very firmly on my palate, which I'm impressed with. All in all, a good, solid 88 point Chardonnay, 88 to me, could be a four to you or a hundred to you, it really doesn't matter, you know, we talk about the ratings, but I find this in that 88, 88 plus range, this is a very solid Chardonnay. 16 bucks is probably pushing, it's probably not worth $16 to me, um, but if you're into Chardonnays and you're buying $20 Chards, I can think of people like, I don't know, the Clodoval Reserves or the Franciscans or the you know the, the higher end Chateau St. Jean's or things of that nature. I can see this being a much better buy than psh, probably 50 to the 100 last $20 California Chardonnays I've tasted, probably in the top 10 buys. So there is a group of people drinking that I think could really be happy with this. Better than Silverado, which I just recently had tasted. Um, so of that tier, pretty, pretty well made. Yeah, it, it's, you know, if it wasn't so buttery, it'd almost be, I don't want to call, I don't want to give it the, what I think is big credit and call it Chablis-like, but it, it gets there a little bit on the finish. Now this bandit is, this wine is super hot for so long. I mean, I used to think this was like, I'd like rather find this than like a Honus Wagner T206 card. This was like the rarest thing because they only were restaurant only and it was like this big cold thing. 2005 uh, Sonoma Cotrera, Sonoma Costa State, 20 US dollars, made by Terry Adams, who's a, a really nice winemaker. Um, and this wine is massively popular. You can probably find this on every single steakhouse's wine list because if they put it on, they're gonna get the Wine Spectator Grand Reserve Award. That's just the move with that. I mean, this is like very sought after Chardonnay. You know this, right? This is, this is like gold standard, like, I don't know, like the inexpensive, hot, culty thing. I mean, it was, I'm telling you, I know you're watching along and everybody's nodding their head. This was like, oh, do you have Sonoma? I mean, there was a point, I'm just into story time right now. There's a point in like 1998, 1997, 1999, where I would have at least, you know, don't forget I worked every hour on the floor and basically helped every single customer. I would say that 10 people a day would ask for this. The next most like requested wine would be like two. So it really had some serious buzz factor. But I feel what got it there by being so exclusive and only on restaurant list is what has killed it in today's world where a lot of you right now watching and saying, what is Sonoma Cotrera? Well, that's because, you know, with the internets and all these other ways to communicate, this is a brand that still stays predominantly on restaurants. And if you haven't noticed, restaurants are about in below last place for putting out quality wine related websites. So Sonoma Cotrere, yes, that was a subtle punch in the face. Let's give it a whirl. Though I don't believe in their marketing tactics, their nose is starting out pretty good. Um, there's a, a little bit of a gooseberry kind of component on this. I get like a cantaloupe that I'm liking. Here comes the smoky wood, which is kind of interesting. The wood is continuing to grow on me, and so we're almost into the oak monster's lair. There's a smoky, you know, maple wood kind of component in this wine. There, there is some really nice gooseberry kind of flavors. It's kind of interesting. It's, uh, it's not as vibrant, as explosive as the acacia, though I was kind of down on it because it was too buttery. This is a little bit more classic and subtle, so I'm not totally sure where I want to go with it. Don't forget, if you're watching for the first time, the biggest thing that people overlook with wine is the nose. 
To me, it is 50% of the experience. Now, some people are lucky and can pick up on the nose and others not as much. But even if you're not as much, you have to continue to fight because it will come. It's push-ups, I'm telling you it's push-ups, you know? Which I just worked out for the first time in a while today. I feel really good. Um, so. Continue to smell the wine, get your nose completely in there. I want the glass to hit you completely. That was fun. Um, there you go, that's how you should do it. Um, I want you to be completely in there, and it's, that was fun, I can't wait to watch that. And I really, really think that that is a big part of the experience. I think it really, really helps um, pick up on the flavors that you are going to do when you taste it and give it a whirl like we're about to right now. Before I forget, we're nailing down the Vaniac cab project updates on the site. I'm gonna have a lot for you on Monday, including hopefully Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, the announcement for the kickoff party in San Francisco. I'm leaning towards, I'll tell you now, because I want people to start planning their trip. Come, this is going to be over the charts in San Fran at Crush Pad, catering the event, everybody bring a bottle, whole party, launch party. The wine is gonna be in a weird state, but maybe we'll pull a couple out and just see where it's at. Um, a couple, meaning, you know, some, you know, put it into the glass. What is that thing? I can't remember. Anyway, um, um, so we're leaning towards the first week in December. Um, so I really want to give everybody a heads up right now. I will try to confirm that for you early next week. Uh, I was just at Crush Pad this week. Um, the wine is coming along, the fruit's coming in. A lot of fun stuff with the Vaniac Cab Project. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, there's a link right over here. Read, watch the video, lots of cool stuff. I've been dropping the ball, I think, keeping you informed. I know in the forums, Mott, link it up. There's a lot of links in the forums. There's a whole section for it. Please link that up for me, Mott, and um, check that out. Back to this wine. Um, you know, it, it's solid. It, it, there's a creaminess component that I like to this wine. Um, there's a tangy element that I like. I actually like this almost lime kind of component it has. There's a little too much oak in this wine as well. Um, it, it's a little bit kind of trying to find itself. It reminds me really of like a 16 year old teenager. It's like lime over here, it's a little oak over here. It's like a slate component, a little cantaloupe. So it, it's bouncing a little bit too much for me. It's unfocused and it really falls apart on the finish. Unlike the acacia, which I never would have expected from, did some really nice things on the finish. So the sort of kind of disappears. Mm, it is, mm, you know, it's Chardonnay. I think it's of the level of Acacia, probably, you know, just a little different of a style, a little bit more subtle, uh, not as much oomph to it. And at some levels, it's trying to be Acacia. So I'm gonna score this wine 87 points. Um, I just don't see any reason why you should drop a 20 bone on this. Or 45 on, or 50 on a list, or even worse. This is where emotions are gonna run wild. Lately, we've been very unlucky. Unlucky. unlucky with viewers requesting wines and then I pan them and then I gotta get their emails and they're like, well I'm glad you're truthful, but you know, you can just tell the sadness. I don't like sadness. So hopefully Petaluma comes through. This is the 2004 Piccadilly Valley Chardonnay, 92 points wine spectator, 25 US bones and from Australia and um, really one of Australia's premium Chardonnays, Blue in a State I think of and there's some others but you know, uh, Petaluma has been long, you know, famous for their Chardonnays, so I'm excited about trying what's going on here. Again, nothing crazy on the color. What's going on here? Let's give a little bit of a sniffy sniff. Now, this is interesting. Aromatically, this is by far the most interesting of the bunch. Let's get in there a little bit more. There's like a minty eucalyptus kind of component on the nose, which I like quite a bit. I almost want to say kiwi, but that's so like, you know, even though it's New Zealand, you know, but there's a little bit of that going on. There's a menthol kind of evergreen foresty kind of component, you know, almost like Mr. Clean maybe going on in this nose, which I find quite interesting. There's a really subtle, um, I almost want, is it bacon? Which is so weird. Maybe bacon fat. There's almost like a grease kind of component like going on in the nose as well. This is kind of interesting. I kind of want to play with it a little bit more. Bear with me. I'm gonna go with forest floor and uh, 
and evergreens and like pine needles and a little cream brulee action on the nose. I'm really liking the nose. This is really quite nice. Uh, reminds me of some more premium, interesting white burgundies I've had in the past, especially from 97 vintage, which was a really underrated white burgundy vintage. Uh, let's give this a whirl. If you know who Ernie Shavers is, he's one of the big power punching boxers of all time, but he's under the radar. People really don't know who he was. The man could hit. This wine hits like that. It's c coming at you with such an enormous punch and it's so focused. A lemon custard cream brulee type dessert packs your mid palate immediately as this wine hits your palate. There's some really green, delicious apples bouncing all around the outside of your palate. It's very yummy. This wine is delicious. It's got some oak, it's got some butter, it's Chardonnay, there's no confusion. This is Chardonnay on a Barry Bonds diet. You know, it's coming with the steroids a little bit. It's over the top and I'm trying to decide as I'm wasting time saying Barry Bonds and all this other stuff, do I like this? Do I not like this? This is really walking that line is, is this the version of Australian Shiraz has become over the top fake? Is this, is this wine fake to me? Um, I don't know, I, I find it very viscous and very full and it's, it's, it's very, um, it's almost eatable. I almost feel like I can eat this Chardonnay. Um, all in all, this is really a wine that I want to just describe. If you're into the big, Ramey, Kistler, all those big, Matt Peter Michael, all those big California wines, 40, 50, 60 dollars Chardonnay's, Paul Meyer. This is a wine you need to definitely explore for 25 bucks, half the price, and really packs those kind of elements in this wine. If you're the one that likes more slaty, you know, classic Burgundian styles, this may be over the top and you might be like, this is swell, what is Gary talking about? So this is an old world, new world, psh, Rocky IV style debate. Um, all in all, uh, I kind of like it. I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards it because it is not fake enough. You know, a little work on your body is not so bad, just don't get crazy. Don't go Joan Rivers on me and that's kind of how I think that this wine is all about. To me this is a 91 point wine. It's a very, very good wine to me. Again, triple asterisks, whatever you want to put on the Bonds ball, you put on this because this is the kind of wine you have to understand, embrace. It's like, you know, Manny being Manny, that's this kind of thing. Either love it or you hate it, but you don't have to make judgment, you just have to embrace what it is and I'm embracing this wine for what it is this time, mainly because I'm in a good mood and I've been just so hungry to get back at the table, gone this whole week. Question of the day, tell the truth, please, for once. Do you critique Chardonnay? Are you down on Chardonnay because you just think you're supposed to be and it's over buttered, over oak stuff? Tell the truth, have a phenomenal weekend, and remember, you, with a little bit of me, we have a serious chance of changing the wine world.